This announcement was a big surprise to me. Was it a surprise to you going into this year? Well, I, I think, you know, members evaluate uh, every year um, if they're being productive, if Congress is being productive. And you also look at, uh, you know, how much quality family time uh, you may or may not have. And I think, uh, you know, going into this year, uh, those questions were still remaining in my mind. And um, it was during the break time, however, that I had an opportunity to sit down with my three children and their spouses and my grandchildren and my wife and um, my, uh, my team uh, in Issaquah um, who works in the district office and just have a conversation about um, you know, quality time with friends and family. And I just came to the conclusion that you know, at the end of this term, it'll be 14 years, nearly 50 years of service. And if God blesses me with another 13 years of life, I just turned 67, I'll be 80 years old in that time, and it goes by in a blink of an eye. And, uh, and, and so really, for me, it was all about um, you know, finding, finding quality time with my family, spending time with my kids, my grandkids, my brothers and sisters. Does the current political climate factor into your decision? Well, I, I think any person who um, goes through uh, you know, this thought process, anyone who uh, wants to make a wise and informed decision has to take into account uh, all of the factors that uh, are affecting your quality of life and your lifestyle. So, yeah, I mean, that, that would be a part of the equation. I wouldn't say that that was a major part of the equation, but it was definitely a part of it. So you have about 16 months until you're retiring from the Congress. What are you going to really prioritize moving forward? What do you hope to accomplish in your final year and a half? Well, I, I think one of the most important things we can do to, to really um, improve the quality of life for uh, hardworking Americans is tax reform. And, uh, you know, I, I say that because I'm on the tax writing uh, committee, a senior member of that committee. Um, and I think married to that is trade, and we're closely working with the administration on the NAFTA renegotiations and on the chorus agreement. Uh, those trade agreements are so important to the country, but especially to Washington State, because 40% of our jobs are directly re related to trade. So those two things are, are, are things I, I see coming forward. But in the past, you know, my um, focus has been not only on tax and trade, but also on foster care, on welfare for, for families, on education, and uh, on our wilderness, on veterans, and, and on law enforcement. And those are the areas where I think I've been particularly strong producing results uh, in helping those efforts go forward. And I know that you're a co-sponsor of the Bridge Act that could come before Congress very soon, given the, the new developments with DACA. What's your reaction to the President's decision on DACA, and what do you think happens in Congress moving forward? Well, I'm, I'm hopeful that Congress can come to a resolution on this. I've, I've been supportive of the Dreamers, uh, of course, uh, you, you know, recently uh, highlighted by the Bridge Act. Uh, but even before the Bridge Act came, I've been a proponent of protecting those children uh, who are brought here to this country uh, by their parents. Um, we need to support those young people. They're, they're American, they, they grew up in this, in this country. So I think the, real, the, the most important thing that we can do is immigration reform. I mean, if we did immigration reform, you, you wouldn't have to dissect uh, uh, you know, every little issue out of it and, and play political football with it. And, and that's a frustration that I've experienced here in, in, in Washington, D.C., so I'm hopeful that DACA moves forward. I'm hopeful that immigration reform uh, moves forward for that matter. You're known as a moderate Republican. How do you feel about the Republican Party right now in terms of uh, it being fractured and, and the ability of Republicans to work together to get some of these big issues like immigration or health care fixes done? Yeah, I think part of the problem for me is that I, you know, I, I know I put in this little box of, of moderate or centrist, but I always like to sort of refer to myself. I don't like being putting in the boxes, but I refer to myself as one of the few thinkers. I may not be one of the smartest members of Congress, but I'm one of the few that think about a problem. And what frustrates me is that you have people operating on both sides of the aisle 
uh, from ideological stances. And when you're operating from ideological stances uh, as a Democrat or as a Republican, uh, there, there is no um, consideration of the facts. And, and I think that's where my strength is, is being able to look at the facts and moving legislation forward based upon fact. And so, yes, there is frustration uh, uh, because of the, the lack of uh, congeniality here and the, the ability to work together, but I think that's really based upon two, two basic factions uh, operating against each other from an ideological um, standpoint. What do you think could change that, reflecting on your time in Congress? That, that's a good question I, that, that maybe uh, you know, has to be answered by the voters. I, I think that uh, you, you know, some of the redistricting issues need to be, uh, need to be addressed and how some states redistrict to form strong Democrat districts or strong Republican districts because those members of Congress come back and voice the voice of their people and uh, express their, their concerns and their issues, whether you're a 70% Republican district or a 70% Democrat district, that's the stance you're gonna take. And so I, I do think that there's room to, to take a look at how uh, redistricting occurs across the country where we can create a more balanced approach to um, creating legislation here in Washington, uh, in Washington, D.C. So transitioning to your, the future of your district, what do you think happens in 2018? As you know, Democrats are eyeing this as a major, what they're calling a, a major pickup opportunity. Do you think it flips? Well, I, I think that, you know, during my first few years in Congress, that was a Democrat plus three, which is, uh, you know, between a three and a four, uh, which is a pretty high Democrat uh, evaluated district uh, and hard for me to hold on to. Obviously, you've seen the tough races. It's, it's transitioned uh, because of redistricting into an R1, Republican plus one point. Uh, before this announcement, people were saying, you know, this is, this is Dave Reichert's district. It's his to, to win again. Uh, after this announcement, the pundits have been saying that this now leans to a Democrat. And, uh, and I think that could be correct, uh, considering the, the traveling that I've done in the district and talking to people. The, the feel uh, that I get, the gut feeling that I have is that the, there is a lean to, to the left, not a strong lean, but there is a lean there. And I think there's an opportunity. It's going to be a tough battle. Um, I know there are eight Democrats or so lined up, and you could, see in the, you could see a large field of Republicans lining up to battle for this district. It won't be easy. Are you going to be endorsing anyone? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Maybe after the, uh, after the primary, we'll take a look at who's, who's left standing. My final question before we talk to you again in the future. Any thought about plans after life in Congress? Some people are wondering, are you finally going to run for governor of Washington state? <laughs> I've been asked that question today and honestly uh, hadn't even thought about it until a uh, reporter back here asked that question. Uh, and you know, Natalie, my answer has always been to those questions is, is wherever God leads me, that, that's where uh, I'll, I'll be if the opportunity presents itself. Um, in another elected office, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, I've led that way. Uh, I'll give it consideration, but there are other opportunities out there too. I have, I have no plans at, at this time, um, and uh, I, my uh, heart um, still wants to serve. I still want to help people, so in some form or fashion, I plan to still be engaged um, in our community in, in helping, um, helping people move forward in their lives and, and, uh, and have hope for the future. Congressman Reichert, thank you very much for your interview today and I look forward to talking to you again very soon, hopefully either from Washington DC or in Washington State.